Welcome back to Harley Davidson Machine Shop. What I'm going to show you today is how to bore cylinders in a lathe easy. But you got to make a fixture to do it right. I've seen some <laughs> videos of uh, people attempting to hold cylinders by the sleeve here or the part that sticks in there and that's way too wimpy. You got to be smarter than a piece of metal when you're doing stuff. And you got to look at stuff like it's a piece of metal and not some holy grail Harley Davidson thing or something that it isn't. So you just got to look at stuff logically. So this fixture here is just a big chunk of cast iron stuck on a D16 uh, um, spindle adapter back plate on an incredible Axelson 14 by 30 engine lathe that just weighs uh, almost 6,000 pounds. Incredible machine. It's a rare, this is a rare machine. So you do this, get it square, you can punch holes in your plate here in your fixture and uh, hold all kinds of cylinders. Over the years, I've uh, held dirt bike cylinders, uh, most Harley Davidson cylinders, and, and whatever needs to be stuck on there. So this has been faced, and it'll hold the cylinder square. Now, at the factory school, the machinists there say you should try to avoid um, boring them on a boring bar, regular uh, sharp boring bar. Those things are not super precision like a like a lathe like this. Um, and uh, they can get out and you you gotta you gotta think about this. So you have the cylinders here. This one I cut the sleeve completely out. And and at the factory they make sure that the base of the cylinder is square with the bore, and you can lose that with a regular boring bar. This way, you got, you got the, your fixture faced, and it's gonna hold it square. And if it's out a little bit, then it has the effect of a bent rod, just like you know having a bent rod, because your cylinder's it over. And it'll wear real rapidly, and, it, and it's just not going to be satisfactory in the long run. And that's what you want to do on Harley Davidson's, is think about the long run. Back years ago, many, many years ago, I think in the 20s, they bragged about coming up with an engine that will run 5,000 miles. Totally amazing. And a lot of people don't realize that about uh, vintage motorcycles. They won't run, they won't run or keep up with uh, new stuff. And that includes shovel heads and, it, uh, you know, up to Evos. Evos are very good. And you get back into the older uh, cast iron cylinders and uh, they just don't have that kind of a long life. So you want to do everything you can to maximize the life of your engine and do the best you can. And it takes a while, yeah, to build a, a fixture like that. And, uh, but once you've got it, you've got it. Now, the other part of the equation is the boring bar you're going to use. And it, it's got to be pretty heavy. You can't do Harley cylinders on your bridge port because it doesn't have enough uh, quill travel, only five inches. You, you, you're not going to get uh, all the way to the end of the cylinder. The only regular conventional milling machine that can do it is the XLO. And those are fairly rare. They have uh, six inches of quill travel. But yet you still have to be careful and, and be square with the cylinder base with that cylinder base. So the cylinder gets on there, it's automatically held true. But if, if the uh, cylinder base is not true, then you got to machine that. And you can uh, grab it like that first, touch that up, then stick it in, then stick, flip it around, 
stick it back in and then you're assured it's square but that's not the whole story then you gotta cut it and this is a inch and a quarter boring bar in the famous made in California KDK tool post that has definitely had the axles and laid in mind. Look at the width of this thing here. This cross slide is as big as a hard inch bed. So this thing's solid as a rock. But I have done these cylinders on lesser machines and, and, it, and it's just fine. As long as you true it up here, okay? But it's not gonna cut very well. You need a heavy bar and most heavy bars are uh, negative rake inserts here said uh, CNMG 432 half inch inner circle so you can take a used one of these like here and go across it with a grinder see that I turn that into a positive rake insert with a uh, not much of a nose radius on it and it's deadly sharp you gotta have sharp tools and then you can bore bore the cast iron out and that you know it's often done on the old twin cam 88s to uh, punch them out to be um, oh what it, what did they well I, don't, I forget how big they got back then uh, 95. I think that turned into a 95 inch when you punch uh, the thick sleeve out. And then there's the 883 Sportsters that you can punch out. Um, there's a lot of thickness in the cylinder and put pistons in it and make it a 1200. But I kind of don't like doing that on Sportsters. I'd rather hop them up with the uh, smaller bore. I'll get into that sometime. Now, I'm not going to do anybody's engines anymore. I'll do engines for myself, and I may do an engine um, or two in the future to show every single little thing that I learned to do. It's hard to just talk about it without doing it, so I'm considering it. Okay, we'll see. We'll see how things go. I know I'm hitting. Uh, hitting on some good things here by the number of thumbs down I'm getting and I'll tell you what the Harley thing is the nastiest bunch of crap I ever run into especially <laughs> especially with other people doing it and all I'm trying to do here is raise the bar <laughs> so okay I don't want to build your engine but I want you to be able to build good engines all right and that's how you do it, just like that. I hope that made some sense. I'm going to get back on that K-model thing pretty quick here. But I'm going to do this uh, quite short video. Looks like it's less than 10 minutes on fixed green cylinders in an engine light. Hope you enjoyed that. Okay, I had to come back and um, be sure to remind people if they don't know this, if the lathe here cuts a little bit of taper, which is pretty common on old machines, uh, it's not a big deal because the nature of the sun and home, it follows the easiest path. If you can start a hole straight, have the, have the bottom of the cylinder square, it doesn't matter if it gets a little bit of wobble in there. You just want to leave enough material for the sun and hone to clean out. So the sun and hone will not change a, a, a location of a hole or a direction of a hole. You can have a wavy hole, a tapered hole. It'll go the easiest path. Okay, that's why the factory wanted wants you to use this or at one time when you go to uh, uh, to go to oversized pistons and you don't have to use a boring bar for going oversized pistons unless 
uh, it's uh, scored like a wrist pen cam loose or something just put a big score in there then, then you're likely going to have to bore it but I just want to remind, remind people um, how the sun and hone works okay have a good day